played against the British and Irish Lions of 2009 coming on for the Southern Kings 15. How big is this tour for South Africans? Uh, thanks, Mots. And it's, it's, a, it's a, really, a really massive, massive series, you know, playing against the British and Irish Lions. You only get the chance to play them once in 12 years, you know. So uh, if you look at it in our squad, probably guys that have played against them, you talk about the guy like uh, Dwayne. Also, I remember back then in 2009, he played for Western Province. I think they did well also. The, uh, those middle games, and you've got a guy like France. He's probably, I don't know how many series he has played yet, probably three <laughs> or four British and Irish Lions tour. So once again, it's a, it's a, to, to get an, an, an opportunity to play against the British and Irish Lions, it's a massive honor for mm -hmm. anyone. I'm talking about the management. I'm talking about the medical staff. I'm talking about anyone, everyone who's part of the, of the Springbok team, even with the fans on the stands. To be able to experience that, it's something that is massive. And uh, we are grateful to be where we are currently and we are looking forward to the challenge. Yeah. Crossing thumbs that we'll see some of those fans in the stands as well. Dion, for you, how big has been the headache in trying to whittle down the talent that is South African rugby players down to the 46 that you're going to need for this tour? Yeah, I think uh, we really blessed with some exceptional talent in, in South Africa rugby. Um, I think uh, we've got a, a good core um, of players, um, I think that proved themselves in terms of winning the World Cup. But obviously also if you look at the, um, the different competitions that we've played in, up till now there's really some good youngsters that come through, that put up their hands for, for selection. And um, so the future looked bright in terms of that. So we had some vigorous discussions in, in, in terms of different positions. But it's always good to have that, um, that you can talk about that and that you can finally um, get aligned and get to a decision where, where things make sense for you. So it was, it was quite an exciting journey up till now to, to get to this stage. Yeah. I remember, the, I imagine the conversation, Felix, has been quite vigorous, quite rigorous. I'm sure some cold ones uh, surrounding you as well and trying to, you know, get those final names on paper. But for you, working with the guys that are based overseas, how has that work been? And not only trying to make sure that they stay according to the standards of the Springboks or the standards that you've now set, but making sure that they too remain safe and sound in this pandemic. Yeah, it's been interesting and uh, difficult given the circumstances, but uh, those guys have been great. The guys who have been based overseas, uh, constantly looking for feedback. Uh, we want to keep them in the loop as much as we possibly can. And that involves visiting them, uh, updating them on, on our plans, where we see their game, uh, where we see um, the, the uh, similarities in what they're doing in their clubs, and also sometimes the differences to say, look, we know you're doing this and that's great, but also you might be required to do this. So um, those guys have been really, really excited. Um, and uh, yeah, some tough calls with them as well. I mean, there's a lot of guys there that have been performing really, really well. So. And the synergy between you as well as their parent clubs, you know, trying to make sure that, uh, um, you know, you're in constant communication concerning the players. Yeah, and, and to be fair to the overseas clubs, um, I, I think Rassi said it the other day, you know, pretty much all of them have been brilliant. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of what we do is also still talk to their coaches and, and make sure there's alignment in terms of that so that the player is getting a, a really comprehensive development plan and uh, is comprehensively been looked at in, in all departments of the game. So... Uh, you know, the clubs and the players and the coaches of those clubs have all been brilliant. Tan, congratulations and welcome into the Springbok Green and Gold. You are the scrum master. What kind of improvement have you seen in our local game, particularly now with the, with the Rainbow Cup South Africa, so many of our own players taking part as well? Yeah, listen, I must say uh, it's been actually a very big privilege for me as well. I just need to mention that being part of this. But... Um, I think looking back now, the Rainbow Cup, uh, uh, there's so much com much competition between the guys, and it was really hard to pick the right guys to get aligned in what we want to achieve. So at the end of the day, uh, we're looking forward to it, and it's going to be interesting. Yeah, how much of your um, you uh, you're part of the selection team, but how much of that selection also heeds what the British and Irish Lions team have put together in terms of their forwards as well? Yeah, it's quite obviously if you. Obviously, I've been playing my, most of my rugby in, in overseas. And, and if you're coming from overseas, looking at them, they're always front, uh, forward orientated, playing that way. And obviously, we want to be at least on par of what, what, what they're going to do. Uh, it's going to be a big ask. They definitely um, have much more experience uh, looking at them at the moment. 
Um, but uh, we'll work on that. We certainly will. Hopefully there's enough time to make sure mm. that it all cleans up well. But also joining us via Zoom, and he's become quite the Zoom master. You never have to ask him twice if he's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> the director of rugby, Rassi Erasmus. Rassi, really good to have you uh, on our show tonight as well as we gear up for the squad announcement. Talk us through some of the effects of this pandemic in the preparation for the Lions series. No, Motia, thanks for having us. It was nice to see all those boys together there. Uh, I must just firstly say, when the guys mentioned there, you know, uh, it's been robust uh, selecting a squad of 46. That's a squad of 46, and it has to go down to, to 32 or 36 at some stage. So it has been tough. But coming back to your question on the on the pandemic and preparations, I think, you know, the time for moaning is over now. You know, it's been the same for the British and Irish Lions, the same for other international teams as well. I think the only difference we had is not playing international competition with our local players and you know that's something we have to we just accepted the fact and we we've pulled some plans around that in terms of training camps and you know virtual uh, alignment camps and we we're getting into camp this sunday so uh, i think if we point any more fingers at the past and what the problems was it will sound like excuses so we're ready to go we're ready to go the team is ready to go and we are ready to go as well. We're not going to take too long. We're not going to sit and conversate. We want to make sure that you know the 46 that will be representing South Africa as they take on the best of the North. So up next, it will be SA President Mark Alexander with the announcement we've all been waiting for. Good evening. This is a very special occasion for rugby. The British and Irish Lions Tour happens once every 12 years, which means that it is generally only comes around once in the playing career of a Springbok. For years, in fact, since the last tour in 2009, excitement has been steadily building here in South Africa and in the United Kingdom, and for a good reason. The rivalry between these two teams has always been fierce on the field while also characterized by tremendous mutual respect, which means extremely intense anticipation of nail-biting drama throughout every minute of every game. Before I announce the Springbok squad for the, the Castle Lager British and Irish Lions Series and the Georgia Inter International Test, I would like to thank the commercial partners, MTN, Essex, Castle Lager, DHL, Royal London, Dove, Famous Grouse, Land Rover, Boschendal, Soho Sun, Power Aid, Zero, and KWV. And our host broadcaster, Supersport. Your support is invaluable to the continued success of our South African rugby teams. And now, on behalf of the South African Rugby Union, it gives me great pleasure to announce the squad for the series. Forwards, Lord de Yacha, Dan Dupree, Jean-Luc Dupree, Peter Steph Totoy, Thomas Totoy, Joseph Dweba, Reinhard Alstedt, Urban Etzebeth, Nico Janse van Rensburg, Stephen Kutsoff, Vincent Koch, Sia Colisi, Franz Malerba, Malcolm Marx, Bongi Mbanambi, Franco Mostad, Oxen Che, Skara Ndabeni, Trevor Nyakani, Kuni Oosthuizen, Marvin Ori, Kwaga Smith, Archie Sneeman, Marco van Staden, Dwayne Vermeulen, and Jasper Visa. The backs are Lucania M, Damien Delendi, Faf de Klerk, Apele Fassi, Elton Jankies, Herschel Jankies, Cheslin Colby, Jesse Creel, Vali Ru, Makazoran Pimpi, Spoon Kosi, Sanela Ndwanambi, Ya Penke. Andre Pollard, Kobus Ranach, Wandila Samalani, Roscoe Speckman, Franz Stein, Mornestein, and Damon Valencia. 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is the enlarged Springbok squad. Well, there you have it, the squad that will take on the British and Irish Lions when they hit South African shores in July. The first test on the 24th of July, starting off with the likes of Lourdes de Yacha, the Dupree uh, brothers also in Dan, as well as Jean-Luc, the stalwart Peter Steph de Troy, uh, the usual names, but one uncapped player on this particular slide, uh, that being Joseph Dweber. Congratulations to him. We'll be seeing him in the green and gold very soon, including Nicolas Yacha. Yancer from Rendsburg of Montpellier. So this is just some of the forwards that have made it. This includes the likes of Vincent Koch, the captain, Siam Chanda, Oli Isi, uh, Skaran Tubeni also back uh, in the charge as well. Tr the likes of Trevor Nyakani, Gwini Oestazen, Marvin Ori, also one of the uncapped players that has now made it into the squad. I beg your pardon, already three caps for South Africa. Another uncapped player, that being uh, Jasper Visa. And then then, as far as the backs are concerned, the likes of Damien Dialendi, Faf de Clark, and a new face in Apelele Fasi, uncapped from the South Sea Sharks. He makes it into the national side. We saw Magazole Mapimpi this afternoon in action for the Sharks. Has not lost his touch. Very important for South Africa, of course. And the rest of the back line, seeing the likes of Yao Peng, Sanele Nohamba, Wandisile Simulani, Roscoe Speckman also in the Mix. So this is your team, South Africa. Would love to hear your thoughts as well on it. Use the hashtag #SSRugby. Let us know what you think, Coach. Doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Looking pretty good. How are you feeling? No, I'm feeling good. Obviously, like everybody said, it was it was a tough decision. And I think if you look at that squad, and you, I mean, they they will be. There's a lot of players that, that have lost out that has been really close, you know, and, and it's been, yes, it has been a, a tight call on, on, on a number of positions, but, but I think if you look at the squad, there's a lot of experience there. Um, uh, we only lost three players uh, since the World Cup, um, and so obviously our first thing was to try and replace those players uh, uh, in the likes of uh, Beast, in the likes of uh, uh, Francois Lowe. Um, and, and, and so firstly, we, we, we wanted to look for players uh, and Skulk Brits to replace them. And then, uh, so firstly, big experience there. And then obviously, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of uh, new caps, uh, I think only eight uh, new caps. Um, and, and those guys were, were playing good rugby abroad. Um, so yeah, a very exciting squad I think and and while we selected the squad we also were lucky enough to have a good look at uh, at Warren's squad that he selected so obviously a couple of the selections we feel is to uh, to combat these his selections. Rassi are you happy with the balance in terms of that experience as well as uh, uh, the new stars that are also knocking at the door as far as national colors are concerned? No, most definitely. I think, you know, I think when we were at the World Cup, our average age in our squad was about 26, 27. And obviously, we've got all 30 of those guys. And I think the two guys with some injury cloud over them is only Ergia um, and Luit. All the other guys, seem, uh, we think, will be 100% ready. And I think also Ergia and Luit. So the average of that squad will be close to 28, 29. Now, so that's good. And then if you look at guys like Nuamban and here and there, you know, Avisa and those kind of guys, we've definitely tried. I know it's an old cliche that we say you want to blend mix and experience and you know uh, guys who's got steady form and guys who's on form but also guys who has experience so I, I really think the squad represents that um there's obviously we will always dif differ about a few positions but i think the squad really 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 has that balance for the first time i think i don't really think the squad was as balanced at the world cup as it is now with the youngsters coming in as well yeah. Let's speak about those uncapped players a little bit, Mzwandile. Some, some pretty big names, the likes of uh, Joseph Dweba, Dweba, I beg your pardon, also making it into the team. What, what is now their work in terms of also getting into the squad proper for those tests that are coming up? Yeah, I think the most important thing, if you look at those uh, youngsters, if I can name a few of them, with Sanela Nohamba, who's been through our junior systems, you know, talking about the junior box. Uh, you've mentioned Joseph Dweba, Yao Peng, and those are the guys that have been through the, in our system, which is, it's good to see now it's paying off where they're also making it to the top, to the Springbok team. And once again, uh, the, the most important thing for us is to give them a fair opportunity to work with the experienced players, the likes of Faf. You know, Sanele Nohamba doesn't have to wait for 
seven years to get the same experience that Faf has. Right, so there you go. That's the 46-man Springboks squad. To face the British and Irish Lions, also a couple of tests against Georgia thrown into the mix.